Well, thank you very much, uh, Su Ling, and uh, good morning. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Bienvenue. Uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us in such great numbers. As we welcome our new chief of police, we'll have the opportunity to introduce in just a moment. A number of colleagues from City Council have joined us. Uh, Councillor Alan Hubley, Tim Tierney, our new chair of the Transportation Committee, Ralston King, uh, Matt Luloff, our deputy mayor. I know uh, Teresa Cavanaugh is with us. Is anyone else from Council here? So thank you all. Uh, I also want to point out our next uh, month's guest speaker, the, the new president of the Ottawa Senators, Jim Little is here. Where's Jim? Give Jim a shout over there. He's coming to see how Peter does to, uh, to try to... Uh... So we encourage you that. I think it's going to be quite uh, fascinating. Jim, I've known for 30 years and is a great addition to the local uh, business community. Uh, this is an opportunity for me to give a quick update on some activities at City Hall. Just a couple of weeks ago, uh, under the leadership of Tim, who's the, also the chair of our Ottawa Public Library, we unveiled the design of the new Ottawa Public Library, Library and Archives Canada uh, joint facility at Le Breton Flats. This will be the, the, basically the first uh, project at Le Breton Flats that we hope will kickstart the rest of the revitalization. And if you haven't seen the, the large uh, uh, blow-up photos, it's just on the other side of that wall. I think you'll be very, very impressed. Uh, Diamond Schmidt, who did work for the, uh, the Government of Canada for the National Arts Centre, as well as for uh, the um, uh, beautiful new Senate building, the old train station, uh, did a remarkable job. And I encourage you to go and see the video at inspire555.ca. Uh, I think people will be very, very impressed with the work that we've done, the massive consultation that took place. Over 4,000 people participated. Our First Nations were very involved from, from day one. And this amazing city building project will break ground in 2021 and open in 2024. So it's going to be one of these uh, marquee buildings I think we'll all be very, very proud of. In my recent city, uh, State of the City address, I was pleased to announce uh, three individuals and one organization that will receive the key to the city. That's our highest civic honor at the City of Ottawa. Each of these recipients has made and continues to make our city very proud. This year's recipients uh, include accomplished golfer and three-time Canadian Press Female Athlete of the Year, Brooke Henderson. Former Governor General and accomplished journalist, uh, Mikel Jean, TSN sportscaster and proud resident of Gloucester and uh, a Carleton grad, James Duffy, and the Ottawa Citizen, which is our oldest continuous operating business in uh, the, the city. They're, they're celebrating their 175th anniversary. So these four will be announced in advance, and you, uh, many of you uh, who are able to attend, we'd encourage you to attend and support these individuals and this one business. International Women's Day, as many of you know, happens next month, and together with our Council Liaison for Women and Gender Equity, Councillor Kavanaugh, will be hosting our annual breakfast celebration right here at Jean Pigott Hall. This has become a wonderful tradition where hundreds of women are able to come and celebrate and network. And if you're interested in attending, because the space is limited, please contact my office and give your name and, and uh, email, and we'll be happy to uh, welcome you. And our guest speaker is Catherine Clark, uh, who many of us know uh, in this room. And we'll also update, we'll also be providing an update through Teresa on our gender equity strategy, which is currently being developed. It's now my, uh, my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker. C'est mon plaisir d'introduire notre invité d'honneur. Peter Slowly was sworn in as Ottawa's chief of police on October 28, 2019. Chief Slowly is married with two children and they're uh, making, uh, happy to make Ottawa their new home. Uh, the chief was a partner at Deloitte, where he was the national security and justice leader and a trusted, respected uh, strategic advisor to private and public sector executives. Now, prior to joining Deloitte, he, had, he was a 27-year uh, veteran of the Toronto Police, including serving as deputy chief of police in the largest police force in Canada. He's a graduate of the FBI National Academy, served two, two tours of duty in the United Nations peacekeeping mission in Kosovo, has received many awards, including the Office, Officer of the Order of Merit Police Forces Medal, the United Nations Peacekeeping Medal, the Canadian Peacekeeping Medal, the Police Exemplary Service Medal, and the Queen's uh, Golden Jubilee Medal. Chief Slowly has a Business uh, Administration degree, a Master's of Business Administration, MBA, and a Bachelor of Arts in Sociology. And something you might not know about him, but in the 1980s, he played professional soccer and was a member of the Canadian men's national soccer team. Now, we just announced a new soccer franchise, Atletico Ottawa from Atletico Madrid, and you live at Lansdowne Park, so if things don't work out on the police front, you might be able to go and uh, help out the new team. Uh, I, you know, it's quite fascinating. They're, they're, this is a great, credible organization that's investing in our city, Atletico Madrid. And when I was with uh, at the announcement at Lansdowne just a few days ago, the um, 
the president of the club was there. He'd flown in from Madrid, and he said, do you know the mayor of Madrid? I said, no, never met the mayor. Just a minute, I'll get him on the line. So he <laughs> called him a line. Two minutes later, I'm talking to the mayor of Madrid, and uh, he invited me over there to watch a game. So <laughs> why not, you know? Uh, but uh, it's, it's something we're very proud of. I didn't know that about you and your soccer career, and, and you, uh, I think you look over the fields in, in your new... Just to the south side. Okay, well, you, you can tell when there's a good crowd there or not. But uh, 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 Peter's been um, a, a great addition to our city. I have the honor of serving with Sandy Smallwood and, and others on the police services board. And uh, he's been a great addition, a great a breath of fresh air. And I think you'll really enjoy uh, his uh, stay as our chief and his presentation today. Please give a warm Ottawa welcome to our new chief of police, Peter Smallwood. Well, folks, uh, thank you very much. Bonjour à tous. Uh, Mayor, thank you for the kind words. Um, I feel a little intimidated. Uh, it's the first time I've been in the middle of the bull ring here, and uh, I'm joined with many, many uh, important people. Uh, I have a bit of a presentation for you. Um, uh, I'm going to walk you through a little bit more about who Peter Slowly is, although I'm grateful, Mayor, for sort of giving the highlights and not the lowlights of my 53 years. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about the first 100 days plus uh, since I've taken office. Um, I want to tell you a little bit more about your police service. Um, and then ultimately, I know this uh, was sold out today, but what I hope you will do here is buy in. And buy into what we can and must do together in order to advance not just public safety, uh, but community wellness and well-being, resilience at the individual level, community level, society level. Given that this is the nation's capital, we have that ability to influence and, and impact. I'm going to just uh, advance the slide. So the mayor was very kind in talking about my uh, soccer career. I think he was very generous. My career lasted about two and a half years. I had one cap for the national team. It wasn't a great run with the senior team. But this is me circa 1985. The shoulders are a little broader. The hairline is a little lower. Uh, not as much baggage on the side handles uh, as there is now, and certainly a lot more vim and vigor. Um, I will tell you, I have had three very different careers. And the reason why I've had three different careers is I've had three different spectacular failures in each of those careers. Um, and I think if we're all honest, uh, we will know that it's not your successes that build character and build wisdom, it's your failures. It's those transitions going from on top of the game to being the rookie in the game again that actually help you to learn who you are as a person what matters amongst people and family and friends, and really what your contribution is that you want to be. And that's why I'm convinced, although I've had three different careers, I'm absolutely in the right place at the right time, doing the right things with a group of amazingly courageous people. Uh, 1985, those of you old enough in the room, anybody remember the North American Soccer League, NASL? A couple of old timers in the room, good. Toronto Blizzard signed my contract. I was, I was, um, I was, uh, uh, signed on by the Toronto Blizzard in 1985. Only problem was the league folded in 1985. <laughs> I was out of a contract within months and, uh, and then out of uh, policing within a couple of years after that. Um, I joined policing right after. Um, I did apply to the fire department, I applied to the social services department, and I applied to the Toronto Police Department. They got back to me first. 27 years later, I became a deputy chief, uh, had a great career, um, enjoyed working in the city, had a chance to work across the country, and in fact, probably the, the best thing I've ever done in my life, uh, hopefully my time here in Ottawa Police will eventually eclipse this, but my time in UN peacekeeping missions. Uh, I was in Kosovo in 2001, 2002. I believe Sean Barber is in the room. Sean, are you here? I thought I saw him walking earlier on. Um, Sean is uh, very active in the Centertown community, and uh, he was actually the uh, Canadian rep in that peacekeeping mission. Uh, and when I was applying here, I reached out to Sean and uh, he helped to fill me in on, on you know, the opportunities here. Uh, policing overseas in the UN peacekeeping mission was one of the greatest experiences. It was a chance where I met my wife. I'll talk about her and my family a little bit later on. But what I had the chance to do was work with um, a, police, uh, a police force of jurisdiction in Kosovo. There were 10,000 police officers, 5,000 of which were made up of police officers from 53 contributing countries. And as a Canadian, at the midpoint of my career, trying to figure out what's the best way to do policing, I had a chance to look at 53 examples from every continent. And what I came back from that experience was 
you have, we have, the best brand of policing anywhere in the world right here in this country. Not because it's perfect, and not because individual officers don't let down this important institution, and some even right here in the city, but because pound for pound, man for man, woman for woman, person to person, we get public service. We get policing in the broadest sense. We understand the importance of community policing, and we deliver the highest level anywhere in the world. I know sometimes you might doubt that by what you see in the media, what you hear around coffee tables or at the bar stool, but I want to tell you, you have an amazing brand of policing in this country, and the reason why I came to this city, because I believe you have the best brand of policing anywhere in this country, right here in Ottawa. Things didn't work out as I hoped they would. Wow. No applause for professional soccer, none for peacekeeping, <laughs> nothing for Toronto Police, but flash a suit and tie up there, <laughs> and that's what gets the applause. Okay, I'll be wearing my suit and tie a lot more around here. Here, um, I left Toronto Police because I didn't get the Chiefs of Police job. I had a very difficult separation from an organization that had raised me up and had provided a wonderful livelihood for my family and many of the best experiences in my life and some of the best friends I'll ever have. But it didn't work out. And those of you, again, who are leaders in the room, you understand. Sometimes you hit the post and you got to move on. Um, I will tell you, I went from being on top of the game to being the rookie in the game. I'm grateful some of my Deloitte colleagues are here. Uh, some partners in particular who reached out to my very earliest days where I couldn't even find the bathroom and helped me to understand I still had capabilities. I still had potential. I still had something to offer. And they invested in me. And as I struggled through transition, and believe me, it was a struggle in transition, they rebuilt my confidence, they gave me new skills, they gave me a new appreciation for who I was and what I could make a contribution to, and they put me in charge of very important files. I was very blessed for that three and a half years in the private sector, in particular in Deloitte. It also gave me an experience of being in the private sector, understanding business in the truest sense, non-unitized environments, for-profit, you eat what you kill, get out there and build teams, talent counts, make sure that you understand what the customer needs, what the client needs. Profit is a driver, and you have to be able to appreciate that. I tell you, coming back into policing now in the public sector, in a unionized environment, where you don't have all the carrots, you got a lot more sticks, but you don't have all the carrots, um, it's really helped me as a, as a business professional. It's tied a lot of my MBA experience into working in both areas of public sector and private sector, and has broadened my ability to be a manager and a leader, and I, I hope a good person as well. And I'm grateful again. I know our Deloitte folks are here. I can't tell you how much the impact you had on me personally. So appreciate it. So fast forward. If I can fast forward. This group of unusual suspects got together back in August. Uh, the only one missing there is uh, Councillor Egli, and I appreciate he's not on the board anymore when this picture was taken. Um, and, and the mayor is in the picture and wasn't part of the board when the decision was made to hire me, no doubt, had some input on what he wanted in the police chief for the, for the nation's capital here. But this group of people sat down over a long period of time and kicked the tires on a whole bunch of uh, highfalutin wannabe chiefs of police and settled on me. I will tell you they asked some very tough questions, very, very tough questions in that room. Uh, I did my best to answer them, but the toughest question, the absolute toughest question, the one that I fear that they would ask is whether or not I was a Leafs fan or a Sands fan. Well, I am supposed to be truthful in the office that I hold. And so I swallowed deep and thought long and hard, and I said, well, I have to give the honest answer. I am a Leafs fan and long-suffering for over 40 years in this country. Still waiting for a Stanley Cup. It's not going to be this year, clearly. <laughs> but I did say, because being a police chief, you have to be a little political, that when the Leafs play the Sens, I will be Switzerland. I will be neutral. I'll put my peacekeeping hat on, and I won't cheer for either side. But when the Leafs are playing anybody else, I'm cheering for the Leafs. When the Sens are playing for anybody else, I'm cheering for the Sens. So I know Jim Little is here, and I know he's going to be the next speaker uh, at the breakfast series. And Jim, all I can say is I'm going to set the bar as low as possible, and you'll have an easy chance of hitting it out of the park the next time you come in. Uh, I'm looking forward to spending many years cheering for the Sens when the Leafs aren't playing them. And in fact, I went to my first game when they played against the Montreal Canadiens, the enemy of the Leafs, and I cheered as long and as hard as I could for the Sens, but they ended up losing in overtime. But anyway... Um, I'm grateful for the board and their wisdom. Um, I, I, I joke uh, tongue-in-cheek, um, I think they made a great ch uh, choice in me. But I can tell you, um, they made a great choice in the chief administration officer. Um, the finances in this town matter. 
the ability to uh, bring people into an organization, a strong HR, the ability to modernize the organization through IT. Those are the bailiwick pieces of Jeff Letourneau, who was the board selection for the new CAO. I'm grateful uh, Chair Smallwood and the team, not only in, in, in choosing a chief, but constructing a team fit for purpose, one that can advance community policing, one that can do so within a fiscal envelope, and one that can modernize and bring a, a level of humanity into the organization. I think that was sorely needed. And I'm grateful for the ongoing wisdom and support, not just from the board, Mayor, you and your council, your staff. Many city managers are in the room here. I won't be able to see them all and recognize them all, but it's a great team that's been constructed here, both by the elected official portion of things and managers and city managers who've grown up in the organization, grown up in the city, and have welcomed me into your ranks. It is an entire team, I think, that influenced the final selection. And I'm grateful for all of your various inputs. This doesn't seem to want to advance. So the announcement day. Uh, it was a hot, steamy day in August. Uh, I was uh, paraded over to the older part of City Hall, the classical room there. Um, a bit of a deer in the headlights, lots of light bulbs flashing, and um, lots of tough questions coming in from media, lots of tough stares from my own members who weren't quite sure who I was and was only tapped into the rumor mill and waiting to see what the real version of me was. Um, There's a big smile on my face uh, um, because I was extremely happy. Uh, my, my family were, were thrilled, my 13-year-old less so. Um, but uh, it was a big day for me. Um, I was grateful for a very warm welcome, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But literally, literally um, a couple weeks after that announcement, I was up here looking for a house to move the family into. And while I was having a series of orientation meetings with my senior team and uh, meeting with the OPA uh, president, Matt Scoff, and sort of getting oriented to the city, one of our members took his life at 474 Elgin. He was a former RCMP officer, married, family man, young kids. Um, I don't want to overemphasize Thomas Roberts' death. Um, I know Dr. Etch is in the room, and, and many of you work in the uh, mental health and addiction sector. Matt Luloff, you shared an amazing story of your own struggles uh, coming out of the military. This is nothing unique to policing, but it is a wake-up call for policing, and I think it's a wake-up call for all of us. The mental health of our people, of our city, our community members, our civic, civic workers, our police officers, our firefighters, our paramedics, our counselors. I have to check in on myself more regularly than any time in my life. Am I physically good to go? Am I mentally good to go? Am I psychologically good to go? And if I'm not, I need to let somebody know. And I need to accept the fact that I need help because we all need to accept the fact that we need help. At the gala that we hosted, uh, the, the Ottawa Police Gala, I was sitting next to uh, Thomas's um, widow. And we were doing a special part of the ceremony honoring those who weren't with us anymore, either died in the line of duty or who took their own life, in this case. And um, I watched his widow. I always get choked up at this point, sorry. She got teary-eyed, and, and I was holding her hand, and I said, uh, what's wrong? She said, there's so many great police officers here, there's so many great community members here. There's so many great community leaders here. Why didn't Thomas reach out for help? Sometimes we just need to reach out for help. So that's the only down point. What's the up point? There are so many great people in the organization, people who have sacrificed much, served much. You'll never know their stories. They will never come to this podium. They won't have the opportunity to tell their life history their ups and their downs make you laugh, make you cry. But they do this every single day for you. Amazing group of people. Some of them are in here. Kenny Bryden. Kenny, why don't you stand up? He's going to be running our neighborhood teams across the city. <laughs> Annette is here. She helps me with my French lessons, keeps me honest at the podium, and she's filming me, apparently. <laughs> Six forty-five a.m. October twenty-eighth. I got sworn in by an Indigenous leader, Justice. I had my badge handed to me by a frontline constable, who himself had suffered a lot um, um, around the stresses that we've just talked about. And I had a chance to shake the hands of the brave men and women, sworn members and civilian members of the Ottawa Police Service, and start to get to know them. And it's been an amazing uh, three and a half months so far. The change of command ceremony was for me a chance to honor Chief Bordalo and his contribution, his family's contribution to the city. He's a good friend, he was a good chief, he was a good leader. He had a difficult go, as every one of us do, 
and I'm sure I'll have my days when I'll reach out to Chuck and go, man, I could use some advice. Um, but I'm grateful for his service. He was uh, very, very gracious in, in transition, giving me time and insight. His family uh, are rocks of this community, and, uh, and we should recognize his contributions and the contributions of the line of leaders that go back over 100 years in this, in this city in policing. Uh, the Flanagans, the Fords, um, a, great, uh, a great legacy of leadership, and I hope to add on to that in my time here. A little story about that big fancy staff I'm holding. There's a ceremony where the, the previous chief hands this staff of office over to the current chief, and I was told we're supposed to actually do a bit of a mock wrestling as the old chief refuses to give up the staff and the new one has to pull it out of his hands. And I was a little nervous because I wasn't in particularly good shape back then. And Chuck had been retired for a couple of months and was in the gym every single day. And I thought, I might lose this damn thing. <laughs> and then I'll have to go back to playing professional soccer again because I'll be out of policing again. Um, anyway, Chuck kind of handed it to me, almost threw it at me. Um, <laughs> Not because he didn't like the job, but he was ready to go on to the next stage of life and, uh, and enjoy retirement, as at some point I'm sure I will for whoever he is or she is that follows in behind me. Um, um, I'm also grateful uh, for the turnout there. People came from across the country. Um, uh, I had a point in that session where, like today, I teared up a bit, and there was a senior officer in the back of the room who just yelled out, you got this, chief. And I went, you know what? That's awesome. They have my back. I gotta have their back. It's my family, whoops, jump past that. My wife would kill me. <laughs> my lovely wife with the bouquet of flowers. Um, my son, my daughter, can't tell you the reception they've had from their kindergarten teacher for my son, middle school teacher for my daughter. Those of you in the education system, great schools, great teachers, great staff. It's one of the, uh, the jewels of this city. Um, and my family really has felt welcome, and it's allowed me to do my job to a much higher level. And that's given me a, a wave that I'm running out of time, so I'm going to keep advancing forward. First day on patrol with the frontline officers. They got me in a foot chase, a car chase. We kicked the door down. We arrested four people. We seized two knives. I thought, man, if every day is like this, I'm not going to last five years on my contract. <laughs> But while we were doing all those dynamic things, I mean, literally in the middle of doing an arrest of somebody who had uh, uh, just in, been involved in a car chase, a couple of kids came running out of one of the communities where we have our NRT in, and we're literally surrounding the officers as we were searching a car and looking for a person who had just run away from us. And they were asking the officers, you know, that they, they'd bring candies with them, and the officers knew their names. And like in the middle of searching this car for a weapon, the officers were interacting with the kids, and I'm going, this is awesome. This is, this is exactly the way it should be. A little less on the arresting side, a lot more on the community building side, but this is what the dynamics of policing and public service have to be. Uh, so, Mayor, thank you. You've given approval. Board, thank you for an accelerated hiring plan. This is the current group of recruits that I swore in a couple weeks ago. They're actually on the ground right now. As of last week, they're on the ground. Oh, that's... Not quite the underground that I wanted. <laughs> Jim Little, I told you, I set the bar really low. It can only go up from here. Uh, the, uh, the young lady in the front with the very short pixie haircut, uh, she was bald when I first met her. She was the second female ever at the Ontario Police College graduation of over 300 police officers from across, to be, across the province to be the parade marshal for the graduation ceremony. She has a set of lungs on her you cannot imagine. She had shaved off all over here to raise over $10,000 for someone who was struggling with cancer and whose family needed uh, financial support. She finished almost at the top of her class in every category, uh, post-secondary education, multiple languages, a leader of men and women and police officers. She's a rookie. I might as well get out of my chair because she's ready to sit in it right now. And that's just one story of 30 within that class and one of what will be in the Ottawa police history, 153 hires this year, the biggest hire we've ever done in the police history. We need to bring 153 more people like this into the organization and we'll have solved a lot of the problems that we're facing right now. I swore the, uh, the officers in, um, and then they hit the ground this week. I've actually seen a couple of the recruits on the road in my patrols, and they're doing a great job. The coach officers love them, the senior officers love them, and they love serving and protecting on the ground in Ottawa. 
So speaking about on the ground, if I can get this to advance, we have an EDI plan. Um, we have it because it's the right thing to do. Equity, diversity, and inclusion. Diversity is a fact. Inclusion is an option. Equity is how we get there. Um, we should have police officers who know they can join the job and bring their full selves with them. Their sexual orientation, their race, their religion, their place of birth, their skin color, their gender. They should be able to feel that there's a space for them in the organization. A space for them to, to, to be their full selves. And then to take that out into the community and share that with the community in so many wonderful ways. And in this case, it's a Muslim officer who's gone to prayer in one of our community mosques and are joining them in prayer and then engaging in a broader discussion around public safety. We should have that type of inviting organization where people come, where they stay, where they thrive, where they contribute, and they move on and do other amazing things in life. We're going to need a lot. Thank you. The EDI plan goes well beyond the human rights pieces. It goes into removing bullying from the workplace environment, harassment in any form. These are huge challenges, not in just in policing. I know across the board, in the private sector, in the public sector, right here in, in this city, in this city hall. These are challenges that we all have to rise to as leaders to figure out how to do better for everybody. I sometimes hear my own officers say, oh, this is about blacks advancing and racialized advancing, and what about us? It is all of us. Anybody who's not got ahead in the organization because they've tried hard, but they're not in the inner group, should not be in the outer group. Anybody who's felt bullied or intimidated in the work environment and are too sick in their stomach to come to work and deliver their, their needed services with an EDI plan. Anybody that feels they're not being accommodated because they've been working in snowy conditions and freezing cold for 20 years, 30 years, and they need a place where they can work physically, and they're not getting accommodated, this is the plan for you. And so this is an issue well beyond race and religion and gender. This is an issue for all of us to embrace. And I've asked my leadership within the Ottawa Police Service to fully embrace this and advance this. And if we do this for ourselves, we'll do a much better job for all of you when we're out there serving and protecting you. Hate crimes. We announced the creation of a hate crime unit on a, uh, on a Thursday. And literally within hours, we had a hate crime incident happen at the Holocaust Memorial right here in the city. Someone threw eggs at the memorial. Um, we were lucky. We had in place uh, seasoned investigators and a team that could mobilize around it. We were very fortunate to be able to reach out to a very strong Jewish community here through our own Jewish members and their contacts, people in the community like the Rabbi Bolka, um, and we were able to get on top of this very quickly. Um, still an ongoing investigation. Um, but let's not take for granted that we are a diverse, inclusive, pluralistic, democratic society. But hate lives amongst us. And hateful people, for a whole bunch of reasons as to how they got there, impact not just individuals and not just places, but a broad impact right across society. As police leaders, we need to take it more seriously and do better at it. As community members, we need to create the conditions where hate has less and less of a chance to gain a foothold and create these type of incidents. I mentioned the, the neighborhood teams, neighborhood response teams going into neighborhoods. We have three in place before I came. We're doubling that number this year. Uh, the market area will get the first installation in May. Bayshore and Centertown will get it in the fall. I believe that if we put our really good human beings in uniform, directly embedded into your communities, working directly with your community members, we're going to have the biggest possible impact, not just on policing and public safety issues, but broadly on their under, underpinnings of crime, education, unemployment, lack of critical infrastructure. If we can integrate our services to a greater degree, we'll actually produce a better return on investment for tax, taxpayers and the dollars they put into it. We'll produce a better quality service overall. I'm quite convinced that our officers are brave and courageous. And when terrible events happen, and they do, at the War Memorial, just a couple of weeks ago on Gilmore Street, they will happen. We are not immune to tragedy. It's not a matter of if, but when. We'll have another one of these things. You will have tremendously brave police officers who rush towards danger when other people are clearing out of the way. But we need to do more than simply protect. We have to serve at a higher level. By the way, the officer in this picture himself struggled greatly with some of the stresses out of this call and others, and is continuing to come to work, supported in a number of ways within the organization public about his own struggles and trying to advance the issue of mental health and wellness. Most of the calls that our officers deal with are around mental health addictions, 
It's not placing calls, catching the bad guy. It's dealing with needles in parks, people in addictions, combinations of mental health. I've met some of the workers here on the front line with some of our shelters uh, and, and housing facilities. This is the business of policing. It shouldn't be the only business of policing, but this is the business we're in. And if we can't figure out how to integrate our services and address these upstream issues, we're gonna have huge challenges. I can tell you I've been hugely impressed by this city and your approach to a health focus on solutions as opposed to an enforcement focus on it. We will be able to bring that enforcement piece when needed, but we need to focus more on prevention and health and building resilience at all levels. We talked about the Gilmore Street shooting. Even in the immediate crisis response, our officers are there, the yellow tape is up, but the community needs to normalize. They need to get bad access to the buildings. They need to be able to feel free to walk on the streets, reclaim public spaces, get their kids back into school, not have a knot in their stomach every morning when they wake up. And so, yes, there has to be an immediate police response. But we need to be able to bring in other community leaders, other civic leaders, other managers who, who provide services to the city in order to get a sense of normalcy back quicker. We talked about the mental health homelessness issue. I understand that the council is grappling with this issue going forward. We're in full support of the, of the efforts in this area. The better work we do in this area, quite frankly, the less work my officers will have to do. We've got some great support from the city. They've embedded healthcare workers and social service workers into communities like Vanier, Overbrook with our officers, where we're working now in the field together, developing new capabilities and relationships going forward. At the end of the day is about service, a public service. This is a picture of uh, an officer pushing somebody out of uh, a snowbank recently. I can tell you there's a thousand of these stories every single day. Uh, a couple of our neighborhood officers bought a, a lady who just didn't have any money left to buy Tylenol fever for her kids. Went to the drugstore, paid out of their own pocket, came back and delivered the Tylenol medicine so that her, their children could break their fever that night. I've had officers hang curtains for elderly because they simply can't get up to hang the curtain and it's just a request that was made of them. Took no time to do it, just an act of service. I was on patrol with another officer. He stopped the car. He said, Chief, we got to get out and talk to this lady. She was on the side of the road, literally just crying. I said, who is she? She's the mother of, a, of, a, of another young lady who we had to bring back to life twice from drug overdoses. She just passed away a couple of days ago. That's the grieving mother. We need to go talk to her. And he literally went over and hugged her. Never be on the news. Never be on the board agenda. Never will be known. These are the things every single day the men and women do for the people of this city. I'm so proud of them. So, what's the call to action? Oops. If you want more of this, I need more people. You know them. They work for you in this private sector. They're volunteers for you in the not-for-profit sector. I was on a ride-along with a sergeant who was a cleaner in the city in clean police stations back 25 years ago. And he saw police officers. He got to know them. He decided to join. He put an application in. He's now one of the best road sergeants we have out there. They're your family members. They're your kids. They're your brother, your sister. They're the best because they have the best quality, the best hearts, the best mind. They want to serve, truly serve. Please, bring them to the Ottawa Police Service. We'll prepare them. We'll set them up for success. We'll get them in, get them on the ground, doing amazing things for you and with you. And if you don't have somebody to bring forward, consider how your agency can work with us. Work with Dr. Etches at Health. Work with the school boards. Work and volunteer in whatever way you can, because if we do all this together, we'll have a safer city, a better city, a more inclusive city, a true city that represents the best country in the world, the capital city, Ottawa. Thank you very much.